Yo, what up, guys? Life with Luke here back again. Sorry about my voice. I'm a little sick today. <clears throat> but I am excited to bring you another budget deck tech. This is my red-green location moving deck. It's all about moving characters from one location to the other or just having a location be at or a character be at a location. So, of course, it is pretty budget, but uh, just a little heads up. There are two legendary cards in this list. If you can afford four of them, I would love four Jim Hawkins in this list, but two is pretty good. As you can see in our gameplay videos after this, um, we end up do getting Jim Hawkins on the field, and Jim Hawkins is an all-star, super fun card. Well, let's go ahead with the, uh, with the deck tech here. We'll start with turn one. What are we looking to do? So we can drop a Deville Manor. Just the one drop location gets us a lore every turn, and it only costs one to move there. And it's four to defeat this one. Another turn one we would love to play is Zazu, Steward of the Pride Lands. So he's a 2-1, so pretty pretty strong character, can, can challenge some stuff too, but it's time to go. Well, this character is at a location, he gets plus one lore. So something you can do is you can actually play Zazu turn one, and then... Turn two, you can play Deville Manor and pay one to move Zazu to the Deville Manor and have him go on a quest for two on your first time you could quest with him. And uh, yeah, so that's a nice little combo you can do as well. But yeah, Zazu's not bad, so we got four Zazus. And then uh, rounding out the one drop slot, we have two action cards. We have Voyage and I Will Find My Way. So these are both cards that just say move characters to a location, but Voyage can move up to two characters of yours to the same location. And I Will Find My Way says, it's actually, it's, this one's actually a song as well. And Chosen Character of Yours gets plus two uh, attack value this turn. They may move to a location for free. So I Will Find My Way moves one character for free. Voyage moves two for free. I Will Find My Way is a song. It also gives plus two attack, which is great. So these are good cards to see. Voyage and I will find my way. We're just running three of each. We don't want too many of those, but they are pretty good for the deck. Next, we're running uh, for the two drop slot. We don't have too many things that we want to do on, on turn two. We got Stitch Little Rocket with Rush that can help protect our locations. If someone tries to challenge them, we can throw this guy right on the field, challenge right away. And this guy's pretty, pretty, pretty good. And the fact that he has one toughness is not that big a deal because uh, you'll see later we are running Sumerian talismans, which help us refill our hand when our characters die in a challenge on our own turn. So that's no big deal. Stitch Rocket can maybe draw some cards as well. We are running four Hey Hey Accidental Explorer, just an upside down coconut bird right there. He's a three two. Uh, mindless Wandering. Once per turn, while this character moves to a location, each opponent loses a lore. So this is pretty good. You can just move this guy to a location, and you could protect this guy, maybe put him in Cusco's Palace or Fang River City or an RLS Legacy. Your opponent's losing lore. You got this 3-2 that is, is now protected in a location. Pretty solid card. And uh, last but not least, for the two-drop slot, actually, we do have one more card after this as well, but for the last character, we have, we're just running a couple Milo Thatch. He's your man. While this character is at a location, he gets plus two attack. So he's a 2-2. Two, two, but uh, you put this at a location, all of a sudden it's a 4-2 for two. That's amazing. And he can quest for one as well. He's, he's like a unreckless Gaston from the first set. All right, and then rounding up the, the last song we have here in the two-drop slot, we got I've Got a Dream. So this is a, this is a card that really I'm hoping will work in a dreamland. So I have a dream with I've Got a Dream, and it's, you have four I've Got a Dreams in your hand, and you can sing it with, the, like, the same character for free, and you can just ready themselves. Uh, so, yeah, the, the combo would be, like, you know, something like, uh, I don't know, you have Peter Pan or something at a location, anything at a location with two lore, like Fan Graver City, <clears throat> anything at the location. And then you ready chosen character of yours at a location. So, basically, once a, lo once a character's at, at, a location you can quest with them maybe or you can uh just sing the song right away by uh exerting to sing the song and then you can ready that character they can't quest for the rest of the turn but you gain lore equal to the location's lore so if you have somebody at fang river city and you play i've got a dream you immediately 
basically gain two lore. So if you have four of these, you can gain a bunch of lore out of nowhere. And I think this is a very cool card. Underrated, slept on a little bit, uh, but I'm a big fan of it. It's pretty fun. You can gain lore out of nowhere with this card. So yeah, be prepared for that. All right, uh, turn three. What are we doing on turn three? We have, it looks like just two cards here. Cusco's Palace, a nice seven willpower location. Gives you one lore a turn. And it's got the city walls. So whenever a character is challenged and banished while here, you banish the challenging character. That's a useful ability, but uh, it's nice to just have a large location uh, that, that has a crazy nice ability. The move cost is three, right? The move cost is so high. But that's why we have cards like I Will Find My Way and Voyage, right? We can move a character there, two characters, to the same location for free. So we can move two things to Cusco's Palace for free. All of a sudden, our, our opponent will not want to challenge those characters as well, right? It's pretty fun. All right, now we have Sumerian Talisman. <clears throat> we have four of these. I didn't pick up all of them. During your turn, whenever one of your characters is banished in a challenge, you may draw a card. So this is our card draw here. We have four of these, and you play this item, and it just kind of stays there for the whole game, hopefully, until, until they de destroy it with an item destruction. But yeah, you can just run your Stitch Little Rockets. You can trade... Get rid of a character and draw a card. It's so good. And we have a couple other characters here that want to be challenging. So, Sumerian Talisman is good. Move on to the four drop slots. <clears throat> we have a bunch of characters. This is, the four drop slot's pretty heavy here. We got Cubby. He's a 3 5. Quest for one for four man, of course. We're in the four drop slot. Inkable. With, with, uh, he is the mighty lost boy with the bear ability. This character gets plus three attack this turn whenever this character moves to a location. So another reason why we might want to be moving our characters around, right? Cubby gets plus three attack now whenever we move him. So he, now he's a 6-5 for four. This guy's huge. Absolutely massive. Like these are these are this is how you um this is how you build your own, you know, like very strong meta card. Like this is a 6-5 for four. That would be meta, but we're gonna build it ourselves by moving it to a location first. <coughs> now we have Shenzi. Very good card as well. 0-6, but actually, it's a 3-6 if this character is at a location. And um, what's the hurry? When this character is at a location, whenever she challenges another character, you may draw a card. Even more card draw. With the Sumerian Talisman, we could actually draw two off this if we Kamikaze or Shenzi into something that will also take Shenzi out. But yeah, I just like a... I just like it. Whenever she challenges another character, you can draw a card. You don't have to banish the character in a challenge. You just have to challenge them. Just hit them. So this card is super good, and again, we need this to be at a location, which is why we have so many locations, which is why we have so many ways to move it to a location, but a lot of the times you just pay the move cost and move it to the location for free. Anyway, you don't need these cards to move them there. But yeah, Shenzi's very, very, very powerful. All right, now we have Peter Pan, Lost Boy Leader, a 3-3. Three, three. I came to listen to the stories. Once per turn, when this character moves to a location, gain lore equal to that location's lore. This is another way we can gain lore kind of out of nowhere without our opponents expecting it. We play Peter Pan, we immediately move it to a location. Peter Pan's still wet, doesn't matter. It's not questing this turn anyway, but what it can do is it can move to a location once per turn only. You can't do this infinity times. Once per turn, you gain lore equal to the location's lore. So you play Peter Pan, you move into location, you probably gain like two lore if it's a, uh, our last legacy. Very good. And then, um, the locations. Here's Fang, River City. Six willpower, four to play, two lore every turn. And it's surrounded by water. So characters gain ward and evasive while here. Very good ability, ward and evasive. That's crazy. Happy to give that to, like, my whole team. We got four, RLS Legacy. What a crazy cool card right here. So beautiful the solar galleon characters gain evasive while here so evasive this one is technically ward and evasive right but this one is evasive but it also has another ability if you have a character here you may pay two ink less to move a character of yours here so it normally costs three to move here but if you have a character here it only costs one 
which is really good. We can sneak characters onto the RLS Legacy with Voyage. We can also sneak Jim Hawkins onto the RLS Legacy because that's his ship and he can kind of sneak on there himself. So that's cool. RLS Legacy, uninkable, but it is a very powerful. Let's move on to the five drop slot. We got two Jim Hawkins. Space Traveler. It's a 4-4, four, four, quest for two, with two abilities. This is it. When you play this character, you may play a location with cost four or less for free. Insane ability, right? What the heck? And then whenever you play a location, this uh, this character may move there for free. Super good. So yeah, this this guy's amazing. You want to have like four copies of him for sure, but he, he is about... $15 Canadian or so. He is the the pricey point of the deck. Maybe about $10. I think he's about $10 actually. So about $20 for those Jim Hawkins and the rest of the deck is like literally under $10. So for the for about $30 total, you can totally get this whole deck. Uh, next up, we have two Moana Born Leader. Not as good as Jim Hawkins, but if you have two Jim Hawkins, I'd probably replace these. It's a 4-4 four, four quest for two as well. With Welcome to My Boat. Whenever this character quests while at a location, ready all other characters here. They can't quest for the rest of this turn. Very good ability, though. You can use the ready ability to protect your creatures or to attack twice and draw twice as many cards with Shenzi's. So, uh, it's got some uses. And last but not least, we got Stitch, Covert Agent. A 3-3 three, three for 5 with Evasive, quest for 2, and it has the ability to hide. While this character is at a location, he gains Ward. So that's especially good with, um, well, I mean, it's it's especially good with, I guess, Cusco's Palace or Deville Manor. It just wants to be on any old cheap location, and it already has all the relevant abilities, Evasive and Ward. So, you know, this guy's pretty good. I just thought I would try one of them out. I don't think he's that useful or essential to the plan, but he is a good card. So that's the entire deck. Hope you enjoyed the deck deck. Let's get into the gameplay, and I'll show you how it works in action. Stay tuned. And we're playing this location deck today. See how it goes. We got two copies of that legendary Jim Hawkins, and we got lots of four-cost locations to drop down. And, uh, yeah, uh, we'll see how this goes. Well, basically, the, the whole idea is to play characters that basically want to be at a location or something like that. So we got Fang. We have a Hey Hey, you know, that can make someone lose a lore. Um, I think we're keeping Jim Hawkins and Fang. We're going to try and build around that a little bit. I think turn two is good. Turn three is good, but we should probably... Yeah, maybe these turn fours are good too. Shenzi's not bad. Cubby's not bad, you know. But I do want to look for, um, kind of want to look for a one drop, you know, because I'm going first. So let's get rid of these three. Oh, we got a one drop location. Not bad. So in this situation, I'm not too sure what to ink, but I do think I've got a dream is a late game card. I think this is the best thing to ink early game. We'll drop a Deville Manor. Gives us one lore turn unless it gets defeated. It's four willpower doesn't have any abilities next turn we gotta drop a hey hey we got one lore already oh uh we could drop a hey hey or we could drop another deville manor but i'm pretty sure it's better to use all of our ink efficiently here so i think cubby might have to go actually i'll just ink this deville manor actually i kind of wanted to save it for some reason but i don't think i need to save it so whenever this person chooses to gain lore we can move this to a location and make you lose that lore that's pretty fun it's a pretty good card it's also just a three two for two inkable so it's just a, it's not a bad card on its own but i do have a location out so it's only one to move to the deville manor cruella's estate they play one jump ahead that's great <clears throat> so for turn three, I kind of just want to play Cusco's Palace here. So I think we just ink another Deville Manor. It's crazy how many of those we're getting this game. I'll play a Cusco and a Cusco's Palace, home of the Emperor. 
It's got city walls. Whenever a character is challenged and banished while here, banish the challenging character. Not bad. It costs three to move there, though, but I, that's why I'm running uh, some of the action cards that can move a character to a location for free. Get around some of these expensive costs. I don't have any in my hand, though. Oh, they play another one drop ahead, so they're really ramping up to five ink here. They play a little Simba, Scrappy Cub. Quest for three, crazy. And, and Cusco's Palace, by the way, does give me one lore a turn, and so does the Crowlow's Manor, so there you go. It's very good. Okay, so now we play something on turn four. It's probably Cubby or Shenzi. I think it's Shenzi. So I'm going to ink Cubby, because, of course, we are setting up... We're setting up for next turn. Hopefully we draw an inkable card. And then we play Jim Hawkins and Fang River City together. And that would be crazy. Oh, they play their own Jim Hawkins with a McDuck Manor. Nope, an RLS Legacy. That's pretty nice. Okay. So now that Jim Hawkins is there, it has evasive, and it costs two less to move a character there. Oh, so they pay one to move Simba to the legacy? That's that's annoying. It's okay, though. It's okay, though. It's no big deal. Okay, we did draw an inkable, so I can do my own play, which I think is the play. Right? Gotta get the... Gotta get the thing going. This is cool. Play a fang for free. When I play this, and then and then I can move to there for free. So it's got ward and evasive. Very cool. And this is gonna quest. And this is probably gonna deal with this location. And yeah, because they get two per turn with that thing. That is quite annoying. I don't love it. I'm out of cards. Where's all my cards in my hand? Uh, they're all on the table. I got six cards on the table. That's where they all are. It's pretty cool. We've got Fang River City. That's two a turn. So that's I'm gaining a total of eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight per turn. I'm real. I think I'm ahead. They, they're playing How Far I'll Go, um, and they're not singing it. They're just playing it. One into the inkwell, one into the hand. So maybe they were looking a little deeper for something good. What did you find? Ink quest lore. We're going to quest for three with Simba. What is Jim Hawkins going to do? It's a 4-4 four, four, that quests for 2. Is it going to challenge Hey Hey, Shenzi, or quest? Challenges Hey Hey. Okay. Okay, I think I know what to do actually. I think I I think I have a plan. Oh, that's very good too. So first off, I think I want to move this Shenzi to Fang. It only costs two, which is not that bad. I could play this Sumerian Talisman as well. Actually I should have waited probably so I can draw a card, but it's no big deal. This can easily challenge Simba there. And this will challenge there and I get to draw a card. And this is Peter Pan. And I'd like to play Peter Pan. I'm not going to ink this. So the thing I am worried about is be prepared. But I don't, I'm not that worried about it because I have three locations on the board. One, two, three, four lore per turn with these locations. So be prepared is not even that bad for us. Also, maybe I should have quested with Hey Hey earlier, because I don't think I need to deal with the legacy. I think I can just quest away and win. So if I'm one short, that's my fault. It says seven, though. Be prepared. That's not even that bad. I have four loca three locations and an item. 
All right, I'm up to 17. Oh, dang it. I could have could have potentially won. Damn it. So I, I could have potentially won, actually. If I quested with Hey Hey earlier, I would have been at 18. Move to Fang, get two, 19. I would have I would have been at 20. So I actually could have won right here if somehow I don't win the game, which honestly, it's impossible. I think it actually is impossible for me to lose the game from this point. Thank you for the well played. Well played. Yeah, you can deal with Peter Pan, but Peter Pan already got me too low right there. Which is solid, and you can't deal with all these locations. Locations are kind of OP. Good game. We did it. We got a ranked victory with the location moving deck. And it kind of it, it showed some it showed some stuff. I kind of want to play one more game. <clears throat> and see how it goes. We did win like pretty good though. That was because we did get the um Jim Hawkins plus the Fang River City. That was quite a huge a huge play. That was pretty large. We also we also went first. Well, we're going to go first again. Oh, yeah, I put these stitches in here. Uh, last minute swap. Um, I don't even know if I really even want these stitches. I don't, I don't really know what I want right now. I think I'll keep one stitch. Get rid of everything except for Deville Manor and the stitch. Okay, we got a Milo Thatch, Deville Manor, Cusco's Palace. Okay, I don't really want I don't really want this Milana character to be honest. <coughs> Start off with a Deville Manor like we did last game. Turn two we can go with Milo Thatch or Hey Hey, whatever we prefer. Or Stitch Little Rocket, but I don't really think that's gonna happen. Alright, Robin Hood, the Hood. So we have I will find my way. I think we will get rid of this. I like that card sometimes, but not right now. And I think I will play Hey Hey because um, you know I might need this three. The three attack might be relevant against some stuff. Yeah, like Mr. Smee. Or, you know, oh, that, that just swings in right there. Oh. Okay, a voyage. I don't really think we need the voyage. So we'll, we'll ink the voyage. Good top deck voyage, I guess. So I kind of want to play Deville Manor plus a two drop here. Maybe like a... Or, or maybe we just play Cusco's Palace and trade. But I don't, I don't actually think that's very good. I like having characters on board to protect this and having another location might be nice and I think we do we don't really need to stitch that out we can stitch out something else I think we just play Milo Thatch and I could quest here but I'm just gonna take this out actually um yeah cuz I cuz basically that protects my locations a little bit better I don't want to regret leaving stuff alive for no reason. Might as well just take it out. Love since just a 2-2, two -two, but it does draw a card when it comes in. Not bad. And then Mr. Smee did go ahead and attack the location and takes it out. Shenzi's quite nice here. Uh, yeah, I think Shenzi's quite nice here. We'll, we'll play a Shenzi. And we'll trade with Smee here with just little 2-2 Milo Thatch, which is, which is enough. Because of the one damage there that Smee ends up taking without a captain in play. Maleficent, sadly, not a captain. Captain Hook? That's a captain. Ooh, Jafar. It's a pretty large character. It'll have five attack next turn if they draw for turn. No, what are you doing? Oh, that's unfortunate. I want to move here and attack this and draw a card. I hope I draw ink. Oh, I, I didn't. Well, that's fine. At least it gives me something else to do, which is ink cubby and play a legacy. Which is also pretty cool. Uh, 
All right, that's uh, that's the power of Shenzi. Can draw a card, you know. Has three attack now. It's a three six with two damage on it. It's now dead, but it's besides the point. It kind of protected our locations. We're slowly gaining the lore here. Jafar is actually going to be taken out by Stitch Little Rocket, so that's nice. Oh, there's a sad beast. All right, we're up to seven. Ready chosen characters, that's strange. We just trade here. And I don't know what I'd do with this card. Kind of just leave it. Maybe we can use it mm, like in a couple turns. This is kind of like, this is kind of like a combo card. I do like it though, but when you're out of cards like this, it's a little bit sketchy. Another sad beast? Well, these cards are very expensive. My deck's pretty budget. Azazu. Okay, we're gonna put Zazu in the RLS Legacy. It's now evasive and quest for two. Which is actually pretty solid. That's what Zazu needs. It needs evasive, because it quests for two now. And then I can use I've Got a Dream to ready chosen character viewers at a location. They can't quest though, but they gain, but I gain lore equal to the location's lore. So I can just like gain two more lore pretty quickly here. They're gonna try and attack this. See, if they attack this, then you're not gaining four lore. If you gain four lore, exactly, see? They just wanna gain the lore and then my locations, we're just good, we're gaining two. So I will quest, and then I'm gonna play the song to ready him up. We gain two. And this little rocket guy, see, like, there's no reason to just not play him, I guess. Kind of just, like, hit there, you know? So he draws like less cards, I guess. It does have more attack though, but it's only seven. I guess it doesn't one shot the legacy. So it's still two people. Quest for one, okay, now it's exerted. So now whenever they draw a card, they gain a lore. Maleficent Sorceress, draw a card, gain a lore. Well, they're thinking. I think we are uh, putting them in a a pickle because they, they kind of do have to take out the legacy now. But honestly, that's kind of my own fault. Maybe I should not have attacked with my little Stitch Rocket guy. And maybe the little Stitch Rocket guys are just not even like that good of a card because like I did swap Dragonfire for those Stitch Little Rockets, thinking they would draw me cards when I had my Sumerian Talisman out, but when you don't have the Sumerian Talisman out, they're just kind of worse. Oh, this is awful. This is awful. I think I just have to pass turn, though, because if I top deck a location and move them both there, I can quest for four, which is still not even enough. I don't know. I don't know what I can do. I think this this one is over. And I went first as well. Maybe the dragon fires are still good. Maybe the stitched little rockets aren't so good. <laughs> Not sure why I made that change. Oh, we got a whole new world and they win the game. They draw seven and they gain seven lore. GG. <laughs> Well, those were um, those were a couple games, anyways. Uh, location moving, pretty fun stuff. I think we should try another one. I think we should try one last game, game three. See how it goes. Oh, I kind of wanted to switch around those stitches again. <laughs> Sumerian talisman. I think we got to keep that. Oh, another one. That's too many.
Um, I think we already have a three drop and a two drop, so let's just look for one drop. Okay, we got one. We got two. We're going second. Oh, it's it's uh, not looking great. It's in Ken Zazu. We'll play Zazu. We have Sumerian Talisman plus Stitch combo, which is not really a great combo. It's just like a decent one, I guess. Nottingham smokes. Uh, I kind of want him to have the extra attack, but he just won't. Oh, Stitch Little Rocket could be actually pretty good here. And I think Stitch Little Rocket will also hit it next turn. I think that'll be good. Stitch Little Rocket OP? No, it's not OP. It's not bad though. Oh, come on, my Stitch Little Rocket, dude. Oh, why you do this? Okay. I gotta play characters on the board. Gotta get rid of this Nottingham. Gotta quest. It's like a, it's like this whole tempo thing right now. Like, yeah, we really gotta get rid of this location because John Silver is a problem. Good thing we don't have Rush. Uh oh, is this Jolly Roger? Oh, if that was Jolly Roger, that would have sucked. All right, location gone. I need to play Sumerian Talisman for sure. I don't know if I actually quest, to be honest. I think I play Shenzi. Uh, Shenzi doesn't do anything right now because I don't have a location, but I will soon. I will soon. It's a tough call, it's a tough call, it's a tough call. I think I'll just play Shenzi. And I'm going to quest. Forces my opponent to make a decision. Stitch Little Rockets coming in. Trading with my Hey Hey, John Silver. No, what? That was weird. I would have expected um, John Silver to, to attack that. Ah, oh, they just want a quest for two here. Okay. Another Shenzi. Man, another Shenzi's really good. Might be better than this Talisman. I'll get rid of the Talisman. Jim Hawkins drops in an RLS Legacy, moves to it for free. This thing right here is going to quest for one, not scared of nothing. They gain two from Agrabah, they're out of cards, they're top decking, what do they got? But they do quest for two with John Silver, if nothing else. It's just, oh, they got a one-drop Minnie Mouse, that's pretty awful for them. They're looking, they're looking. Oh, you're attacking. That ain't good. Okay, we got Cubby. We got another Shenzi. This is moving in here, for sure. And we're playing another Shenzi. This could one-shot Agrabah the next turn. Could challenge Agrabah right now. Whenever this challenges another character, I get to draw a card. <clears throat> I think I'll just play the Shenzi. Draw more cards, you know. And I think right now we're going to go ahead and remove Agrabah. It is a problem. There's no need to ink this cubby. We're good. 
because I don't really have any more cards right now. But I do have two Shenzis in play, which might draw me a couple cards. Ooh, they play another location. Interesting. We're going to quest and quest. Okay. Move Shenzi in. This Shenzi will challenge this Minnie Mouse and I'll draw a card. It's another Shenzi. Interesting. Um, I think we will just double challenge this John Silver because I do want to draw a card here. We're drawing tons of cards. We'll attack this guy. And I think it makes sense to just play this. Okay. And I think at this point I can ink something. This actually looks really good. This this setup is actually looking very good. Super Oh, they drew another mini mouse, dude. It's just over. Oh, it's so unfortunate. I can't really do much. Um, I think it's just time to quest. It's just probably just over, right? Do one of these. No, do not move. There we go. That should do it. That should do it. This was a pretty good game, actually. Look look at this overwhelming board state. Like, two Shenzies that are drawing me cards, two RLS Legacies, a Jim Hawkins, a Cubby, a DeVille Manor. This guy's got nothing going. No gas. I'm just churning through. Pretty happy with the way this is going. They move Minnie Mouse in. They take out my Jim Hawkins with Minnie Mouse. All right. It's not going to do it, though. Um... That's game. GG. Hope you enjoyed uh, those gameplays. I tried my best every single time. And I think I won two out of three there, so I won my set. And yeah, go ahead and build this deck. It's pretty fun. It's pretty cheap. It can draw some cards. I think it's getting this one card, Tuck Tuck. It's this rare card, Tuck Tuck, from next set. And it's perfect. I'm going to put four Tuck Tucks in the deck for sure. It goes right into this deck. But yeah, until next time. Take it easy.